From Jackson Park to Millennium Park to the Botanic Gardens, Chicago can boast many magnificent public gardens and parks. But behind closed gates on small city lots are the private personal gardens that may say the most about people as individuals and Chicago as a city. Usually we don't get to see other people's private gardens, but in private places, photographs of Chicago gardens. Chicago photographer Brad Temkin takes us over the fence. And Brad joins us now. Welcome to Chicago Tonight. Thanks. You know, one of the cool things about uh, the book is that uh, the side of, of a house that you don't see when you see a front yard, when you go to a backyard, it's like a completely different world. It's like a completely different world. Tell me, uh, and many of these gardens aren't necessarily gardens that would make it in a garden magazine. Um, what were you looking for when you decided what to include in your book? Well, when, I, when I'm uh, making photographs, usually I'm the thing that strikes me are relationships between things and it's the stuff that's left behind that kind of tells a bit about the people and and how i relate to it and um but would you say that these gardens that as you look at as you look at at, at the book these are sort of ordinary gardens they're not splendiferous they're not magnificent things with fountains and everything they're they're ordinary gardens but they have a but you know what attracted you to these the, particular the oasis quality you know the sort of like the escape that people kind of decorate their own room they're decorating nature and uh, and just the colors and and um, it's the personal touches the Pers personal touches like what well like for example in the photograph of the on the cover well, for example what we're looking at right here what are some other personal touches? well in that in that photograph the thing that was uh, the the little balls or the chairs or the the way that things are organized in these little small spaces um, I enjoy just the way people organize their private domain and um, it was great being invited into these places I would many times just knock on doors and and ask to come by and I talk with people and and they would it was like being invited into their house and and then just making pictures, it was an honor to actually be able to go into the place and, and um, kind of capture a little portrait of their little oasis. You mentioned the cover, and on the cover of your book is, uh, is, is, is That's a my picture of birdhouses. Yeah, this Tell is my stepmother's, uh, stepmother's house, and the birdhouses were actually made by my stepbrother. Um, when I was making this picture, I asked my uh, stepmother, what her favorite spot in the garden was and she said when she came home every day and she came from her garage to come to her house this was the thing that she enjoyed seeing the most was this this you know the birdhouses because it was my my stepbrothers and and it just kind of gave her a piece a, a peace of mind and and a warmth and um because so, I understand your stepbrother is deceased is that right yeah he passed away uh -huh. so this this particular vantage point uh, brings it uh, just just has a has a particular meaning to your stepmother for 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 all those reasons. Well, for yeah, a, a lot of reasons, and and um, it's almost like it's a piece of of Ray, um, but it also is a, a way for you know Bobby when she she comes in and she enters her her, it's like being home again. You know, most of the pictures, as you mentioned, have uh, of the gardens. The gardens have items in them. They have uh, stuff in them. Uh, memorable items that you've seen in gardens that just really captured your attention? Um, yeah, one of the things, I, I, the photograph of the blue ball, blue wall, I, I just couldn't believe that these giant balls were you know, in this space. And, and There's all kinds of stuff. There's statuary. Oh, the There's head. head. Yeah. I was, uh, it was very early in the morning and, and I couldn't, you know, I mean, I walked in and I, all of a sudden I saw this head and I, I just looked at the space and I thought, what a wonderful, or the yellow sprinkler on the wall there and, and listening to Dick Buckley on the radio as I was making the photograph. Um, it, they're they're wonderful, wonderful experiences for me and, you know, it it's great when the pictures kind of bring back the experience maybe for somebody else and it's an affirmation. Brad, what was the strangest thing you saw in somebody's backyard? Strangest thing? Mm, strangest item? I, I would, nothing was strange to me. <laughs> it, it was all, I, I didn't have any judgments. Um, they were just, I was fascinated. 
when I'd see things and I learned about why I was attracted to something. I, I think probably the strangest thing was wh when I saw this man reading this garden on Grand Avenue and there was nothing, it was total barren and there was this little tiny corner and this man reading and I, and I thought, God, what the, this, this seems so out of place. That was probably the strangest, strangest thing I'd seen. You know, in your, in your book, you acknowledge that you made some of these photographs hyper-real. What do you mean by making it hyper-real? Well, I, I actually um, m move colors to different hues and, and saturations. Some of them I'll, I'll actually remove the saturation. and some Like this one, for example. What did you do to this picture? I uh, changed the color of the wall to be a little bit more royal blue, and I added... Um, the sprinkler. I wanted the sprinkler to become more yellow. Is that right there? The one uh, right there in the middle. You see it. Yeah, this oh. yellow sprinkler, and um, and then I also increased some texture in the radio, so um, so your eye would kind of go off to the two sides. And Is that cheating completely. when you start playing with the color? Start playing with the intensity? Well, you know that's a good question. I I don't think it's cheating. Um, uh, if you call like Monet painting the haystacks blurry or Picasso using cubism. It's just the way an artist, it's sort of the liberties that you take in, in um, interpreting what you see. Because this isn't photojournalism. No, it's not photojournalism and it's not a, a house and garden book either. It's a book of photographs that happen to be of people's gardens and really it's, um, it's more about the place in which they live, the little private private abodes that people have. You know, it strikes me that the fact that so many Chicago yards are just 25 feet wide, for example, our, our little patch of grass in the back is just 25 feet wide. Does, uh, does that smaller space allow people to do something that you couldn't do in a bigger space? They, they're sort of forced to. Um, you know, I mean, it's sort of like you have a room and you're redecorating this room and you get to decorate it every year and you, you come into it to relax and, and kind of escape and maybe have a beer or maybe read or maybe meditate and you never have to worry about cleaning it up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know they, uh, they say that uh, the garden, I read, I read somewhere once that gardening and religion are the obsessions of middle age. Is, does, that, does, that, uh, does that ring true for you at all? Uh, well, not so much religion, but uh, gardening is, is pretty relaxing and, and just hanging around in gardens. I, I love it. I really do. Well, Brad, thanks very much for being here. And again, the book is called Private Places, Photographs of Chicago Gardens. And the photographer is Brad Tim.